Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. Well today we're going to add some custom buttons. We're continuing with our Divi Basics theme. We've got three little buttons here. First one there has just got a gradient background. When we hover over it, it's going to switch gradients and add an icon. Second one there has got a bit of box shadow and we've given it rounded corners. When we hover over it, we're going to lose the box shadow and it's going to change color third one there the red one we've got slightly rounded corners on that and when we hover over it it's going to change color and grow these are nice little effects to have on your site if people are mousing around this sort of thing happens it's going to get their attention pretty quickly and it's really easy to do there's no extra coding involved in this today at all so let's get started i'm going to enable the visual builder and let's go down and let's just get rid of these buttons i've got here So I've got a section, the blue tab. I've got a row, the green tab, with three columns in it. Let's add our first button. And if we add a button, there's the button module. There's Divi's default button that you usually get, which is fine. It's not really interesting, but it's functional. It works great. Obviously, put what you want your button to say up here. We're in the content tab of the button. If you actually want to, if I hover over the dark writing, and this is common to most Divi modules, you'll see some icons pop up here. If there's an arrow, we can set up desktop state and a hover state. So if you wanted it to say something else when hover, somebody hovers over it, hit the little arrow for the hover state and put in what you wanted to say. So now when they're not hovering over it, it's going to look like that. When they are hovering over, it's going to look like that. One thing to remember about hover effects is that they work great on desktops, but for tablets and mobiles, they're not really going to work well. Of course, the button's going to work fine when they tap on it, but just bear that in mind with your hover effects. Okay, now the important part. Down below, we've got the link. Obviously, put the link to where you want to take people in here. I'm just going to put a hashtag in as a placeholder. Best practice is usually if you're linking to your own site, like another page or a section on your site, open it in the same window. If you're linking to somebody else's site or off your own site, open it in a new tab. That way that your site stays open all the time. OK, well, you can give it an admin label for anybody that doesn't know what that is. Let's call it my new button. If you look on the back end of Divi, if I go down to our little purple button and hit the wireframe mode over here, which is kind of back end. If you haven't given things admin label, they're going to come up with the generic titles, blurb, blurb, code, code. Whereas I've just given it my new button. If you've got a lot of things going on, sometimes makes it easier to see that way. So let's just switch back to desktop mode. OK, let's move on to our design tab here. First one we've got there is alignment have it left where it is at the moment default center and this is the center of the column that it's in remember we've got three columns here so it's centering it within that column there or on the right hand side i'm going to have mine in the middle you can decorate your text however you want you've got dark there light and if we go down one more you can completely customize the button which is what we're going to do today so in the button under the design flip the little custom styles to on you can change the text size, the text color. I'm going to leave mine just as it is at the moment. I'm actually going to put a different background on there. You've got color, gradient, or image. Let's use a gradient just for fun. Just hit the add background gradient. I'm going to make that text color light so we can actually see it. And you can change the gradient direction from linear if you want to. To radial which means it'll emanate out from the middle and if you want to you can change the start and end position so you've got more blue or more green and you can completely segregate the colors if you pull those two close to each other like that so you've got a little circle in the middle I'm happy for mine to stay as it was we're not using a background image but if we were you could place it above there button border width if I make this border red, say, you'll see the red border there. And you can increment up, down, 
or you can slide to make it bigger or smaller, or you can take it away completely. And if you're using colored buttons and gradient buttons, it's not a bad idea to take the border away unless you want to use it for an effect because you've got to make it the same to look good in my opinion you've got to make it the same as the colors you're using okay and as we did before we can change it when we hover over it to a different gradient or color or image if we want to let's stick to the gradient go to the hover state and let's change our colors let's make it perhaps red and the second color let's make that perhaps purple so when we hover over it, it's going to say that there. So there's one example of how to customize a button. Let's add a new button to here, and I'll show you how to make nicely rounded pill-shaped buttons, which are quite fashionable on sites at the moment. So again, let's grab our button, put in whatever you want there, obviously. Put your link in there. Again, I'll just put a hashtag in. Same best practice. Let's move over to our design. I'm going to pop it in the middle. I'm not going to do anything to the text, but I will use the custom styles in our button here. So I'm going to flip that one to on. Text color, I'm going to make white. It'll disappear into the background there. This time, let's make our button blue, perhaps. There it is. And when we hover over it, let's turn it purple or something like that. OK, I'm going to take the border away. If you don't want to take it away, just put it blue and purple on hover right there. Now here's where we can make it slightly rounded or more rounded. The slightly rounded corners, put a low pixel value in. Just, just have to put the number in, it'll put the pixels in for you. You can see it's got slightly rounded corners there. But for a nice pill shape button, ramp it up to about 50. And you've got a pill shape button right there. Obviously button letter spacing is the spacing between the letters. If I pull it up, the letters get further apart, pull it back, they stay the same. And I should have mentioned before, Divi comes with a huge amount of fonts, it really does. And if you want to audition one, just put your mouse over it and it'll show you an example of that font. I'm going to leave mine on the default right now. Here you can change the weight according to what font you're using. And again, I'm happy to leave mine as is. You can change it from italic, capitalized, upper and lower capitals, underline or strike through, or combinations of them all. I'm going to take mine off and just leave it as it is. Now, you may have noticed when I hover over it, there's a button icon there. If you want to show it, leave that to yes. And Divi has just upgraded their icon list to include the great font awesome. So you can scroll down, but there's an awful lot of them. Or you can do a search for something. Or you can hit this little button and it'll break out so you can see it all a lot easier there. So once you've found the one that you'd like to see, let's use something simple like an arrow. That will do fine. Let's use that little one right there. There we've got our little icon right there. Now if you'd like it to be there all the time, if we roll down a little bit, only show icon on hover. You can turn that off so it shows it all the time. And you can change the color of your icon if you want to right here. And you can choose whether you want it placed on the right or on the left. I'm going to leave mine on the right. That's kind of a loud color, but you get the idea, I'm sure. Now you can add text shadow if you want to. It's sometimes a good idea for buttons, but if you're text is too small it may not help much that just lifts it off that button a little bit and you can change the blur strength vertical length etc here another thing that i quite like to do sometimes is have a box shadow we click on box shadow you can choose one of these box shadows whichever works best for you i tend to like that one and if you want to you can create a hover effect with a box shadow at the moment for instance we've got a box shadow there Let's say when we hover over it, we want to remove it. Well, unfortunately, we've got the box shadow here. There's no little arrow, so we can't set a hover state. But we can actually get around that with shadow color down here. We've got a little arrow if we hover over that. So if I bring that up, we can say have no shadow at first. So I'll make it transparent. It'll disappear. And on the hover state, I can make it black. 
a little too dark for me. Let's click on the field, make it a little lighter till it works for you. Something like that works for me. And you just left click and drag. So we've got no box shadow, and then we've got a box shadow when we hover over it. So there's an example of a pill button with a little box shadow. I'll just do one more, and we'll have perhaps have a grow effect when we hover over it. So let's add a new button here. Again, put in what you want there, put a link in. I'm going to skip that for this particular button. Let's align it to the middle. Let's go down and hit our custom settings here. OK, text color, I'm going to make that white. Disappeared into the white background there. Now let's make the background blue this time, perhaps. Now let's make it green on hover or something. Bring up the hover state. Remember to be on the one that you want to affect when you're doing your hover states. So when we hover, it's going to turn green. Let's give it a little bit of a border color there. Border radius there, I mean. Let's give it, say, 10 pixels, slightly rounded. There we go. Now, when we hover over it, I actually want it to grow. And let's take the icon away this time. Let's say no to the button icon, so it'll stay that same shape. So if we go down a little bit now to transform at the bottom, and I've made a video all about the transform. Have a look at that if you're not sure what we're doing here. We've got five little tabs up here. We want to do the first one, which is scale. And again, let's go up to the dark writing, pull up the hover on regular state when we're not hovering over it. I'll leave it just as it is. But when I hover over it, I want it to grow. So just drag this up till it's the size you want it to grow to. And there we have it. When we're hovering over, it's going to be green and that size. When we're not, it's going to be blue and that size. If you actually want to change the timing of your hover effect, you can go over to the Advanced tab, go down to Transitions. And there's our default 300 milliseconds with Divi. Let's take this one up for a bit of fun, maybe half a second. And if you take it up to a second, second and a half, you can really get some crazy things going on. Don't want any delay, want it to happen as soon as the mouse hits it. Speed curve I tend to use for most of my hover effects. Ease works fine, but I like ease in and out. That's when you take your mouse off, it kind of eases back out again. They're all slightly different. Some will work better than others in certain situations. So play with them and get the one that works best for you. OK, let's just go back because I didn't see it grow when I was doing that. Let's make sure I did set that in our hover state. Yeah, I did. That's great. Let's save our changes. And we'll save our page changes. That one doesn't look like it's in the middle of the column. You see when I hover over it, it shows you the actual width of the column there. So let's actually just pop that one in the middle before I quit. There we go. Now let's save our page changes down here. And exit the visual builder. OK, there's our three buttons. There's our little gradient button. The text is going to change and the gradient will change when we hover over it. There we go. And our second one, which is just a regular rounded button with an icon. And we've got a bit of box shadow when we hover over it. And the third one there should grow when we hover over it. There we are. It's taking half a second to get from that to that. So there we have it, guys. There's a few examples of how to create custom buttons with a Divi theme. It's a great little module, the button module, but you can do some great things if you just spend a bit of time. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day day.